So I'm going to step you guys up just a little bit more. All right, perfect. Good, good, good. And I'm going to scoot you guys over. Perfect. Ready? One, two, three. One, two, three. Television personality, yes. author, producer, and philanthropist. She spent 16 years as host of the entertainment show Access Hollywood. Yes. Oh. She recently signed a seven-picture deal with Lifetime TV yes. to executive oh. produce the movie series <laughs> of Bishop TV Jake. Yes. She's also an author. The book is Exactly As I Am for Teen Girls on Building Self-Esteem. She launched the Shawty Foundation for Girls, which supports nonprofits doing work in the areas of STEM, health, arts, yes. unity, and neighborhoods. Yeah. Please help me welcome Sean Robinson. Woo! Okay, and finally, we have an award-winning actress and singer-songwriter that made her own debut in Barbershop 2, opposite of Queen Latifah. She has since gone on to star in over a dozen films, including Aquila and the Bee, Medea's Family Reunion, and Brotherly Love. She recently held her current roles on hit TV shows Scream, Star, and Berlin Station, all while continuing to write and create her own music. Please help me welcome to the stage the multifaceted Kiki Palmer.
16 years at Access Hollywood covering entertainment, but before I got to Access Hollywood, I was a uh, news reporter in several local mar markets. Uh, my hometown of Detroit, I was Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Uh, Flint, Michigan, Austin, Texas. Flint, Michigan, where my news director fired me after two and a half months and said I would never make it on TV. Um, yeah, um, Milwaukee, um, Miami. So I spent a news career in several markets. But when I think about what set me on a path to journalism, uh, I remember when I was a little girl, I would come home from school, stay at my grandmother's house during the week, and after I finished watching my cartoons, like, you know, Speed Racer, The Monsters, um, Jetson, uh, Little Rascals, um, my grandmother would turn on the evening news, and there um, was an African-American woman by the name of Beverly Payne. She was the only black woman on television that I saw. There were no others, and she was one of the first, I believe, one of the first African-American uh, news anchors in the country. And I remember just sitting in front of the TV, I'm like six or seven years old, and just being mesmerized by her because I felt she looked like me, and there wasn't anybody else on TV that I saw who looked like me. I never met her, but she was the one that set me on the path um, into journalism. And as I, you know, as I went through my career, um, knowing that I love to um, tell stories and to give people information and to be on top of the things that were happening in our world, um, when you know young ladies see me and say, "Oh, I grew up watching you." And they feel a little old, but it reminds me of when I saw her, and she, even though I never met her, she was telling me that I could do it too. That there was there were no limits for me, and once you see it, you believe that you can do it. That is exactly what ATT Dream Black is all about. That's the mission to expand the boundaries of what black success looks like. So as all of you women are successful, all of you in the room are successful, people see it, and then they believe they can be it. So it's perfect. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, the, you know, similar to all their stories, it came from a very innocent place of me just growing up in the church, loving to sing, and kind of always being the silly person in my family. Uh, to eventually turning into a first audition that, you know, ended up traveling my parents from Illinois all the way to California to help me pursue my dreams. And at first it just came from this place of, oh, you know, I'm enjoying it. It's, it's no different than a hobby of, you know, somebody playing basketball or soccer or whatever you have it. Uh, to then realizing through my parents and everything that they taught me, really the responsibility and the blessing of having a gift that can shine a light and it, uh, give awareness to other people that are just like you. And so my parents started me very young, going to schools and speaking and uh, you know, just pretty much being an example to other people like me from my similar community to know that it's not just about entertaining and, and having fun you know, with that uh, gift, but it's also the responsibility of what it can do for those around you. And as I got older, I just became more aware of all what those things meant, even when dealing with my own life, when it came to discovering mental health, and when it came to understanding how hard it can be for some people to even figure out their passions that ended up driving me to wanting to host my own talk show and wanting to write a book, uh, just realizing that I'm not just put in this position uh, solely to just have my fun, but to also be an example and to hopefully shine my light in any way to help another person shine their light as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next question for the group, and we'll start with Kiki and go the other way. So you all are role models for young girls and women all around the world. Can you talk a little bit about who your role models were growing up? My role models growing up were like my mom and my grandmother. You know, I grew up with my uh, grandmother a lot. She lived, her house was right behind my house from there. So, you know, when I got my Easy Bake oven, my sister and I would like make our cookie and like eat half of it on the way. Like, we got this for you, grandma. It's only half. You know, so my grandmother was just 
always, uh, you know, she kind of just, I think she gave me my confidence. She always told me that I could do anything I wanted. She was just that grandmother that we all know and love that just supported her grandbabies. And uh, same thing with my mom. My mom always uh, just gave me my strength, looking at her and seeing her be that singer and singing in church and seeing how it made me feel and just understanding her gift and her blessing in my life. It just... I mean, it just inspired me. So those are my real, those are my first big inspirations, my mother and my grandmother. And then from there, they became people that I actually got to see in my life. Uh, and I think the main person that I can say right off the top of my head would be Queen Latifah. I met her when I was nine years old doing Barbershop 2. And, you know, you think to yourself, this person can never remember me. You know, I only had four lines in that movie, and it was a quick little thing. And Queen Latifah is, you know, this big star. But when I tell you guys, when I moved to California at 10 years old, after doing that movie, trying to make my way, everywhere I saw her, she acknowledged me. And it, that meant the world to me. She, I don't know if she even knew, but she probably didn't realize what she was teaching me. Just acknowledging someone and giving them a moment of your time, it can make the whole world for them. And from that moment on, she always supported me. I would find out through the grapevine when I got a role or an opportunity and say, you know, Queen Latifah said great things about you. And I, and I just recently spoke to her. She said, Kiki, it was always your work ethic. I always saw that you were working hard on it. And when I seen that, I said, you know what? I would like to support this young lady any way that I can. And so she was an inspiration to me, not just uh, for who she's been in my life, but because I know I'm not the only one she's been that for. Just the example of being that kind of woman in power and sharing it, uh, bringing other people up, but also not being limited. She's a singer. She's a rapper. She's a producer. She's a... 